we are going to provide you with a virtual tour of the Rye Historical Museum. For those of you who have not been here, the new exhibit is Fishing, Farming, and Fun. Follow me. This is our first wall of farming items, including an oxen bell, a several samplers done by young girls aged 10 to 12. And Alex, can you yes. talk about that? So they, we've got some farming implements mm -hmm. here, uh, a flail for uh, threshing, mm -hmm. the bog shoes for the horses to harvest the salt marsh hay. You can see those two square items. And that, that pitchfork belonged to a famous farmer in the early 20th century named Charlie Green. And you'll see a Tide Mills reference there on the wall. It's a Tide Mill for sale. They were very prominent in this town because, of course, we have the natural uh, tidal flow twice a day, mm -hmm. not to mention freshwater mills. So we had a lot of mills in Rye. And there is lastly a picture of the salt marsh hay. And we hope to present a program on mills, which was supposed to be this mm -hmm. Tuesday, but it will happen virtually or later. <laughs> and there are actually some of these logs that you see underneath the salt marsh hay still standing. So the staddles, uh, a good place to see those is at the viewing area at Odeon Point State Park, where you're looking at the huge freshwater marsh not in the park proper, but behind the farmhouse in Bard. And they, they've got a display there of the hay on the set. Our next portion of the exhibit is fishing. And as you can see, we sit, show several fishing vessels, a local, Elmer Caswell, rye fisherman. And this is the... So the wheel, wheel from the lake. helm yep. came from a schooner and in this case, it was a coastal schooner, so it was carrying cargo from Maine to New York. And in 1905, it crashed on the rocks of uh, Southern Wall Sands. And uh, Selectman at the time, Newell Martin, harvested, uh, harvested here, right? He grabbed that wheel, and it's come down in the family. Yeah. And there is a poem by Jesse Hurley, one of the founding uh, founders of the Rye Historical museum and society and it's called litany of rye by the sea and the picture here of the life-saving station is wall of sands and maybe some of those were the men who helped rescue most of the people from the lizzie car and then we have the actual fisherman leather boots and those were made in that little cottage that you can see in the picture that was a cottage industry in the 19th century, and that's where those fishermen boots were made, and that, that cottage still stands. Mm -hmm. Started Wright Harbor. The building was no longer there, but that was on the south side of the harbor, part of the complex of old buildings to serve the fishing community. And last, the last section on this side, is the fun part of the exhibit, which includes many of the large uh, hotels in Rye that were popular in the 1890s. And one of the fun things is uh, Spears Brass Band here. And uh, the story comes down as that when they practiced, they sounded like sick elephants. <laughs> but I'm sure that was the height of brass band playing, and I'm sure they were greatly appreciated. Yeah. And that, of course, is the Abenaki Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. Golf getting started, turn of the 20th century. As part of our textile collection, we have several bathing costumes. And hopefully, when we get the museum back open, we can add additional textile items. We have dresses, we have men's waistcoats, and bridges. Mm -hmm. So we will try to get those out as soon as we can open back up. That was one of the grandest hotels of all with a tower on the top. It only lasted 10 years in the 1860s. It was the second ocean house and it burned down in 1872. But you could get 100 people in that tower and they could hit a 360 degree view on the ocean. 
the end of what is now Cable Road Extension. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to turn around, you know, the then, original bench from the Farragut Hotel. So this bench uh, could have been in the Farragut in the 1890s, early 1900s. Nope. 12 feet? Is it 12 feet And long? the Farragut, yeah, it's about 11 feet long. Yeah. The Farragut itself, you'll see over here. And that, that Farragut uh, Hotels, the second one, is the one everybody remembers. That was built in 1883, and it lasted until it was torn down, sadly, in 1975. And we have a lot of photographs in our collection. Some of them are out on display, not on the walls, but in these albums on the table here. The photograph of the two women is one of our favorite. Mm -hmm. They're not looking too happy. <laughs> and I think it's because the man on the right is reading the newspaper and he's not listening to them. We have many letters in our collection, one of uh, which we have a segment on the wall from Emma Foss. She describes her life growing up in Rye in the 1890s. It's really beautiful. This glass case, you can hold it. Just pull it down. this glass case has multiple items dating around this turn of the century as well. A top hat, as you can see, several other women's opera glasses, fans. The President and Mrs. Franklin Pierce dolls, Franklin, soaps. We have Franklin Pierce here because he had his campaign headquarters at the Ocean House Hotel, the first one in 1852. And his campaign manager was his dear friend and classmate from uh, Bowdoin, Nathaniel Hawthorne. Mm. And we have several items of dishware, keys. From the Farragut, yep. Yeah. That's a, chamber, that's a chamber pot on the bottom yes. is from the Ocean Wave Hotel. Can't miss the chamber pot. Mm. And then lastly on this side, the original sign for the Farragut, Farragut Hotel. Which has a great story with it. It was being used as a bench upside down. And one day a man went to visit his sister discovered that she had turned the sign into a bench and he had been married there and had spent his honeymoon there. So he immediately took the bench and restored the sign and gave it to us. That's great. And these are archives, topics of rye, marriages, births people who resided in Rye, and additional, any additional information. Lots of different to. albums. Mm. We have the guest registers from the ocean, uh, from the Drake House. We have a thousand postcards donated to us. Old house collection, old graveyards, many other items in these albums. We also have a tour of coastal rye and, and large photographs from, north, from south to north. And then we have the beginning of a book, Rye, Then and Now. We certainly, if somebody wanted to take that project, I would welcome you to come and do that, work with you. Because we've got the old photos and can take the new ones. We also have an extensive map collection here. It goes on and on and on. We have five maps from 1805 to 1900, which show exactly where people lived. So they're invaluable to researchers and families. And here we have uh, a families, families of rye quilt, hand done by many different families and put together, and this was done around 1892. So you can see some of the familiar names, Garland, Knowles, Brown, etc. And we will be having an interactive display at some point available for people to tell us some stories mm -hmm. based on these names. 
these are two additional pieces from our textile collection. This is a wedding trousseau, believe it or not. The wedding dresses in those days around the eight, late 1800s were black. And the reason for that was so that they could wear them after they got married. And so the, the, this is kind of an eclectic uh, collection of artifacts. It also includes an illustrated history of Rye, 12 volumes, so that people could look things up chronologically, uh, which we don't have online. This is something that just exists in hard copy, so it's quite invaluable. Um, there were things over there about Rye's Battle of the Century, finding the oil refinery. Um, the Atlantic, trans piece of the transatlantic cable is one of the most interesting things. That, of course, uh, came ashore here in 1874. The Cable House office is still there. Lock's Neck, of course, was adjacent to where the cable came ashore. So the Lock family is very prominent. We also try to honor old businesses in town. For 102 years, we had Rand's Lumber Company, and many, many people remember it and miss it. So we have a display on the floor here, which is actually on a slab of lumber from Rand's, gathered on the last day of business back in 2012. And of course, we have from the Bicentennial, this is a drum restored in honor of Richard Morton, who, who died around that time. He was a member of the uh, Rye Light Infantry. Uh, our militia was very active as a revived infantry in the 1970s and early 80s. This settle is, as you can see, 1682. was brought over by, hopefully we have it correct, William Seavey. And um, it's carved hand carved, but you can see the date that's carved in there, 1862. And this is a picture of Woodbury Seavey, the grandson of William Seavey. So we assume that the four figures that are carved in the bench are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but there's so much interesting abstract art in this mm -hmm. bench, it's, it's a real beauty, and it, it could have been built in Flanders, mm -hmm. of Flemish oak, and then brought to England, and at some point brought over here. This is another part of our collection, and this is the wedding dress of Jessie Bell Flagg Crockett. And as you can see, this is 1902, when women were starting to wear different colors, different than black, and toward the white or cream color. So just behind that, you'll see we have a few photographs representing some of the churches of Rye and the tragic fire of the Third Congregational Church. The large stained glass window that you see is very interesting. It came from a church that used to be in Rye that was dismantled and moved, a Christian church, in 1947. And a few years ago, we tracked it down and built Rick a mass, and the minister gave us both of the rose windows. So here you see one of them, which is particularly nice in the afternoon with the sun coming through. This wall is our military display, the National Guard encampment from 1920 to 1940, several of uh, card holders for aircraft service and U.S. Army, as you can see, this woman is, I believe her name is white, I mean uh, brown, mm -hmm. isn't it brown? Brown yeah. family, yeah. Yeah, very, brown family, very, very prominent family. family. Yep. Women in the military, a uh, list of veterans. Uh, the resident, right residents who served in World War One, And related to the religion section, on the floor we have several gravestones which are protected here in the museum because they were too broken to be out and restored in the graveyard itself. So they're quite interesting and quite old. And then just to the left of the military section, we have a small section on African Americans in Rye. 
we have a, a significant collection of, of photographs where they were um, prominent in Rye at the turn of the 20th century as entertainers, musicians, in the hotels, uh, also uh, as visitors, and also as employees in the many hotels of Rye. This exhibit case here, as you can see, is filled with military equipment. And on the right, the oldest item is a blanket brought back by one of the C.V. family as a soldier in the war. It kept him warm, it brought it back, it came down to the generations. And we have various rifles and swords here that date from the Revolution, from the Civil War, and then right down to World War II, we have a German bayonet captured by Warren Caswell. There he is in Germany in April 1945. And we also have the posthumously given ribbons to Richard Goss, the only fatality from Rye that we know of in the Second World War. These uh, four people are very important in Rye history. Uh, Jesse Hurley here on the upper right, founder of the, of the Society in 76. Bonnie Goodwin, another charter member who oversaw the restoration of the museum. Louise Tallman, who did tremendous research. And Bill Varrell, author of three books about Rye. Just as an example of one of the things that you'll see upstairs on another tour or when you come here in person, we have a big exhibit called Over Rye. And this particular photograph is really quite amazing because if you look closely, the photographer was brilliant. He is in Massachusetts, that's Salisbury Beach in the foreground. And if your eye follows all the way up, you can see the Piscataqua River in Maine. So he's got the coastline of the entire state of New Hampshire, plus a little bit of our neighbors. Upstairs, we have exhibits going all the way up in the hallway itself. We have a mantle from a historic house that was torn down uh, early in this century on Wentworth Road. We have a bicentennial quilt. We have the Over Rye exhibit that I mentioned. We have a huge collection of items related to the history of Odeon Point. Extensive library. And, and we, and, and, and with the, rest, the last of the exhibit, is the history of Rye Center, historic photos of Rye Center, as well as town government. And then when you go into the library, you see extensive collections, all our things related to Rye, various other towns on the seacoast, New Hampshire, New England, and lots of other interesting material up there. Finally, this is our gift shop. These two uh, cases represent items that are the history of Rye, many of interesting uh, information on Rye Beach, uh, Rye's Battle of the Century, Summering in Rye, and several other books. We also have some beautifully handcrafted by a local potter. We have um, cups that say Rye, New Hampshire, and the date is 1623, and that will be 400 years. That's right, 1623, 400th anniversary of the first permanent settlement in New Hampshire. And we have hats and carrying bags, umbrellas, and several different types of maps. All these items can be ordered through our website.